Hey guys, I thought I'd take a moment and build a three-chamber bat house for you. I think I've built a one and a two so far, or there will be a, a four coming up before too much longer. But while I'm building the three-chamber bat house, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the bat houses, um, to probably about it, things in general, probably things you don't even want to know. But uh, let's start our three-chamber bat house. We'll start with the back. It's all pre-cut, again, on CNC machinery. We've got our roosting grooves that act like a ladder for the bats to climb on. We've got a dado here in the back. That's where the back of the roof will go to create a nice sturdy seal. You'll notice that we have nice curves cut into the house. We have the drip edge. There's actually a curve here. Water will gather here and drip off instead of soaking the whole bottom. Got our little bat emblem. All of the hill, uh, holes are pre-drilled and you'll see these marks here. These are actually there for you guys so that when you get the house you know where 16 inch center and center of the bat house is. And also at the top we have a center hole pre-drilled for a bolt and we have these out here lined up roughly for 16 inch on center. Now what we'll do is we'll start by getting some three chamber sights. These sides are milled out of a weatherproof exterior material that's used to make a lot of signage. Uh, you've probably seen it in the form of signs and not known it, but it is exceptionally weatherproof. I've put some of it in a lake and left it for a month, come back. Uh, it was still very, uh, in very good condition. I may have to do a video on that in the future and show it to you. But I start by placing the sides here. Excuse me. And then I fold them in. This lets me see exactly where I need to put the adhesive sealant here so that I don't get it everywhere. Now, generally, when it comes to caulk, paint, adhesive glue, anything like that that is there, uh, I can walk through the room and I'll have it on me somewhere. I think it jumps off and runs over and just jumps on me. Uh, sometimes I don't even know how I get it. I've been days later doing something and find glue on the back of my arm. I uh, really have to look there. I'll miss that one. I put a little pressure there. Pull this over. And I'm using 18 gauge brads with a brad nailer. This tacks the sides in place and some of the other parts as I go, but it lets me work a little faster than not using them. It keeps the parts in place for alignment until I can get the screws in. And by building it from the bottom up, you'll notice that I'm actually coming from underneath and tacking these sides in. I've tried these in several different arrangements. But I found that this method works the best. And I've, I've also built a large panel jig before that all of these parts I could lock this into, put the front on, flip it. And it, it worked well, but this is actually a little bit faster and less complicated with the new bat house design. Now internally, the houses are fairly simple. We have a roof brace. This is just a piece of material with a miter cut on it. It adds a little bit of stiffness to the back of the house, but it also gives a place for the roof to fasten to the house and seal when it's put on. You'll be able to see that in a moment. We'll tack this one in place here again using a couple of brads. There we go. And now the back's prepared, it's ready for the front to go on. And what we'll do is we'll lay the bead of caulk down. Then we'll go get our front. 
Now, not everything is milled on the CNC machine. The part is pre-cut, pre-drilled. The vents are cut so that when the wind blows, it doesn't blow through the house. We've got our ladder grooves, and on the top where the roof goes, we have a miter. That miter is actually done on a table saw. Actually, every front gets put onto a uh, sled and run through the table saw to get that 25 degree miter on the front. And here we'll lay it down, lay it down here, we'll get one corner set then we'll move to the other corner at the top and you get a little bit of caulk squeeze out and use your fingers to line stuff like this up if you're building because your fingers can see better than your eyes. You can feel just a, a 64th of an inch difference you can detect with your finger, but with your eye you wouldn't be able to see it. And another important thing to note here, when you're using a brad nailer, don't put your finger here and drive the brad. You can get what's called blowout. The nail will go in and actually turn and turn out. With a composite material, it's not as big of a problem. But especially with woods and grain material, uh, it, it's very easy for that brad to turn and follow the grain of the wood. <coughs> now that the top is in place, we'll pull the bottom over and put the nail there. And the alignment doesn't have to be perfect, but I like to get it as close as I can makes it look a little better, a little smoother, easier to paint. Now that the front is nailed on, it's time to do the pre-drilling. Uh, the holes here are pre-drilled, but what this does is it pre-drills into the side and it puts a countersink on the top. Now we'll Put the screws in. There we go. Now we have to put the front roof brace on, and there's one caveat to that when we put the screws in. Go ahead and put the adhesive on here. Let's set this into the front. Take the couple of spring clamps, hold it in place. And this doesn't have to be perfectly flush to the top, but it's, it's close. And then for this one, we have to use slightly shorter screws, and because half inch ply is not actually half of an inch, it's actually 1532nd. These one inch screws are just a little bit too long, so what I do is I use a pair of cutters here and take the tip of the screw off. That way we don't have any sharp points on the inside and the bats won't get hurt by them. Tighten those up. Now we have the body of the house pretty much finished. We still have to do screws in the back, but before we do, we're going to put the baffles in the house and we're going to put the roof on and then flip it over. Now we have the baffles again pre cut, holes at the top. We'll slide this one in and we'll do the next one. You can see what that looks like from the bottom. And we'll look at it from the top before we put the roof on. And there is a little bit of space up here, not as much as in the four chamber, so I still wouldn't call this a nursery house, but the bats can use it. Clean 
tighten that up. Now we're ready to put the roof on. The material here. Caulk okay. on. There we go. Now we'll get a three chamber roof. Just this one. It's all pre cut pre-marked so that I'll know where the drill holes go. We'll get our roof spacer, which is this guy. Put it on here. Drop this in the dado. And I tried several different uh, ideas to line this back up and the dado just worked out the best. It holds the roof in place, makes sure that I have a good weatherproof seal, actually adds a little bit of strength to the house. For those that don't know, a dado is just a fancy word for a slot cut into the wood. Then we'll go ahead and tack it in place. It just helps out a little later if I'm pushing on it the wrong way and we'll pre-drill. And we have the front of the house pretty much finished and the roof is on. And there's that uh, caulk I was telling you about. I'll go back and review the video and see where I picked that up from. Okay, now the house is ready to turn over face down. Let the roof hang off the side of the workbench here. And this is ready. I can already tell I need a new battery. So let's swap that out. There we go. And we'll do the pre drill for the back. Ready to put the screws in. There we go. Now we're ready for the integrated cleat. And the integrated cleat is simply a, a French cleat, basically. And this serves to strengthen the back of the house, give a nice solid place to put screws, uh, lag bolts through, whatever's needed up here. To hang the house, we have a matching piece that is over here. This is a matching piece that comes with the house. Its use is optional. It's not something that you have to use. It just makes it a little easier to hang. This gets secured to the pole or the structure and then when you bring the house up it'll hang right on it and give you time to put the screws and the bolts in the top. And we have a video about that you can look for and it'll show you specifically the cleat. A little tack this in place. Same here. to pre-drill here. Now that roof brace on the inside that we just tacked with brads, these go all the way through and grab into that roof brace, which finishes out the back of the house structurally. Then we only have three screws left. These are inch and five eighths, a little bit larger screws. They go on these top holes without pre-drill and grab directly into the roof panel. This finishes the top of the house out. And as it tightens down, 
you tighten it just enough you can start to see squeeze out come where the roof butts up against the back of the house structurally same thing over here we'll go here same thing a little bit of squeeze out then here we go and that's a three chamber house ready to go If you got any questions, let me know.